Hi, Russ here. Yes, I'm back. I just got an interesting uh, comment from uh, Keith Short, um, who um, apparently just watched my video. And he had a very valid point. And that is showing you how I adjust for the um, blade saw drift, the bandsaw blade drift. And that I'm also, at the same time, I'm going to show you how by whether or not you can determine whether or not you can even adjust blade drift on that blade based on adjusting that wheel. So what we're going to do is right now when I line this up, I have my blade right here. My blade right now is actually set to the drift that the blade is at because it's set Oh, just a hair off the center, and that's where I just kind of kept it. And that gives me the amount of drift that I have, and that's compensated for in my laser light. So, but let's prove the point about how to adjust this. The, the only way I know to adjust it without having to actually compensate for the blade drift is if you do the test that I talked about in my first video, and that is where you move the blade all the way forward. To where the teeth are just off the edge of the of the wheel on the front side here the side facing me and then determine what the blade drift is at that point using the straight line in the board then <clears throat> I'll do it again and I'll put the blade all the way to the back of the wheel and we're going to take another test of that drift I'm going to record what those drifts are on a bevel gauge each one and then we'll compare them both to a square so you can see how the drift has changed from the wheel being all the way on the front and all the way on the back. Okay? And then we'll talk about what I find and what that means. Now, this blade here, I have already have it set right now to the blade drift. So I'll probably have to reset that later, but I'll do that after we're done with this little um, demonstration. So basically... We are going to take, and let's do some cutting. So the first thing I want to do is start it up, bring the wheel forward as far as I can. I got to move you back a little bit. Step back, one step, come on, back, there you go. That's just enough to be able to get in here then. Okay, so let me start it up. I'll adjust this wheel until the blade is riding all the way out on the wheel. And then we're going to do the test and check that angle. Then when we're done, We'll move the, to the back of the wheel and do another test, and we'll compare the two, registering them on each of these two bevel gauges, and then we'll compare the two. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's start it up. And... I think that's about as far forward... That's about as far forward as I dare go. So now let's do a cut real quick. So I bring it up and let us that should be far enough. And now we're going to shut it off. And I'm still holding it right now. And I'm going to clamp this down just to help establish that. Now then, I don't know what that angle is. It might even be square for all I know. And I'm going to take this now and set it up and mark what my alignment angle is here right now. And that's set pretty close. Now, I'm just going to turn it around, and now we're going to cut it from the other end. That'll work just as well. Let's readjust the wheel to the back side. Now 
now it's set to the back of the wheel. So let's do our cut. Let's set this angle up. And now I have the other angle. So, now that I've done both angles, Let's see how they fare up to my square. So if I put this one against here, as I touch it to the top, you can see I got about an eighth of an inch gap at the bottom. I don't know what that measurement is. It doesn't really matter. I just want to compare to this one. So we have a gap at the bottom. Now, let me check this one now against here. And again, I have a gap at the bottom, but my gap on this one is really probably a 32nd of an inch at the bottom. Now, what does that tell me? That tells us two things. First thing it tells us is that we definitely have blade drift. It also tells me the blade drift is all in one direction because the gap between both of these is at the bottom, but they're different. So, what that means is... As I adjust this back and forth on that wheel to get that blade drift to go away, I can never do that because they both are leaning to the same direction. So they're both off a square the same direction. If they were off in opposite directions, I could actually find that happy center by moving my blade back and forth and hit that drift with zero drift then. But a lot of times when you have drift, this is what you this is what occurs you can't adjust it with the wheel not every time but a lot of times and so that means now you have to find another way to square that up for the drift that is why you use the bevel gauge now and i could set my fence readjust it so that it's there or i could very easily uh try to adjust it some other way but in all reality now I would the only way I had only choice I have is to readjust it. So I now at this point I would take my laser and if I turn it here I can actually see my line here is is a little bit off on this. And so that tells me that the amount of drift of the original setting is even closer to this angle than it was when it was at the other angle, I suspect, because it was even further out. So I suspect that what you'd find is that when I put that back in the middle, we're still gonna have drift. It's just a matter of slightly less between these two angles here. Whatever these two angles are, that drift is somewhere in between the two to center it, when you center it. But that's really what this is about, is now you've seen how you can test for the blade drift, and once you set this, and you set your angle on your blade drift, whether you're doing it with a laser light or doing it with just a simple bevel gauge. You set that drift and now you keep this a set aside so that if you ever want to recheck your angle, you can quickly check it in just a matter of seconds to make sure that you're set up here on your fence to the drift that's on your blade. And that's all there is to it. And then if you don't need it, just keep it where it isn't going to get bumped around or cut a piece of wood to that particular angle. And you can use that as a reference instead if you want. So there's lots of ways 
to compensate for your dr built your drift the easiest way is just compensate for it check it to see if you can actually adjust it or not and by doing what I just did you'll be able to tell can I adjust that or not let me get out of that light it makes this thing go dark so you can actually adjust this by that but if nothing else I now know that instead I'm just gonna set that blade to where I'm most comfortable with where it is on the tire because no matter where I set it it's gonna be off so I just set it to where I want it to be comfortable I check my drift and I transfer that to my laser light and at that point anytime I want to check it, it only takes me a check a second to check it make sure that that angle is still good and if I wanted to redo this test for checking the drift I can do that but I only do that if I change the blade or if I've done a lot of abusive work with that blade and I'm kind of afraid that maybe I tweaked it because that can happen too so uh, but I tend to keep this blade on here now until it's pretty wore out but if I wanted to go to a different blade for whatever reason to come back to this blade I can still switch it out reset the, dr the uh, drift on the blade and move on and then come back to this and reset it back to this blade once I get it set up so uh, with that all being said that's how you check for drift and how you can check whether or not you can actually compensate for that drift by adjusting your wheel or not because you can't always do it only sometimes so this should help you identify how to set the drift on your bandsaw and what you have to do to set that drift it isn't any single answer as you can tell now hopefully you learned something here Thank you, Keith, for bringing that suggestion up. I hope I responded quick enough to you. More importantly, though, I do want to thank you for coming by. If you learned something here, please like the video. If you like this video, of course you want to like it. <laughs> but most importantly, come back again because we're nowhere near done, especially if somebody has another comment. So thanks, and we'll see you again very soon.